Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be going over compression therapy for wound healing. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly, truly does help my channel grow. So let's get started. So what is compression therapy? So compression therapy involves sustained or dynamic pressure to the lower limbs. So either using elastic bandages, stockings, um, intermittent compression pumps, and they're measured in millimeters of mercury, okay? So um, it's pressure that's applied to the legs normally in a graded manner. So the strongest pressure at the ankle and it loosens up as um, it goes up the leg. Okay. So the external pressure aids in wound healing by um, improving venous return. So returning the blood flow up the leg because a lot of times um, when we're having pooling of fluid at the bottom of the legs. This is venous insufficiency. It is caused because we have in our veins, we have little flaps, okay? And as our muscles move, it pushes the blood up the legs and the flaps catch the blood so it can't come back down. Now, as we go get older, um, or have venous insufficiency, these flaps don't work as good, okay? So they stay open a little bit, which allows the blood to pool at the bottom of the legs, okay? Um, and it, it doesn't move the fluid up the legs as it should, okay? This can cause wounds in itself. So it um, decreases venous pooling, improves oxygen, um, and uh, and blood flow to the wound site and reduces edema, okay? So that swelling that we get. Um, Self-bandaging should not be undertaken by a patient, okay? So for one, a doctor has to see what type of compression your legs can withstand, okay? Good, healthy legs can withstand about 30 to 40 um, millimeters of mercury, and that is normally quite effective at keeping the fluid moving up the legs. Although um, sometimes we have to use less compression. So we really want to be assessed by a healthcare professional, wound care specialist to see what strength your legs can withstand. Because sometimes we have arterial disease mixed in with venous disease. So we have to be super, super cautious that we're not cutting off the blood supply also, um, cause that would do more harm than good. Um, and then in addition to that, if we're using compression wraps, so we actually have to wrap the legs, we have to make sure that these are applied by a healthcare professional because improper wrapping can do a lot of damage to the legs, can do a lot of damage to a wound, can cause wounds, um, it can compromise the healing process. So how compression therapy improves wound healing, okay? So compression therapy is a vital part of wound care for chronic venous ulcers, okay? Um, so compression therapy helps improve wound healing by the following, improved venous return, okay? So once again, moving that fluid back up to the heart. It's working, it's it's helping those muscles move that fluid up. Um, it reduces the edema and pain caused by the edema, okay? So edema is that swelling in the legs. Um, whenever we have swelling in the legs, even if we don't have a wound, we should be treating the swelling because the swelling, the pooling of fluid is which what causes these venous ulcers, okay? Improved microcirculation. So um, chronic venous insufficiency is categorized by venous hypertension, okay? Um, so the capillary fluid leaks into the interstitium and starts pooling there, sitting there which causes the ulcers, okay? So the compression therapy counteracts this leaking fluid, okay? It gets it 
moving back up the leg, improves lymphatic drainage, improves local blood flow and oxygenation at the wound site needed for healing. Um, next is the release of vasoactive mediators. Um, so this is an anti-inflammatory, okay? So it is linked with improved healing. Um, in addition, compression therapy is associated with decreased peripheral congestion and tissue remodeling, which is important to prevent ulcer reoccurrence. So even once we heal a wound with compressions, we have to be educating that we need to be wearing these compressions. Compressions are for life. Once you're in compressions, you're in compressions for life to prevent ulceration Okay, um, like I always like to say, prevention is key, prevention over cure, because curing something, we have to go back to the preventative measures. That's how we heal wounds, is by using the preventative measures that we should have been using all along. So there are different types of compression material that we can use, okay? In my experience at least um it is easiest to heal a wound with wraps okay i say this because we have to put a bandage on um and it's easier to wrap over top of it than to pull up a stocking over top of a bandage if it has low amounts of exudate so if we're in that phase where the fluid has already moved through the leg and we're just um, using it to prevent the leg from swelling again. Um, okay, yes, the stockings are okay. But with um, when you first start doing wound care for a venous leg ulcer, it tends to be leaking quite excessively because we have so much fluid there. The fluid wants a place to go out. So where's the easiest out? the actual sore itself. So we have so much drainage coming out of that wound at first. Um, so we need thicker bandages. Okay. So it's easier to wrap over them, but I will go over the different types of material that we can be using. So compression hosiery, like you see here. Okay. Um, they are graded. So normally through five gradients, so it starts at the ankle with the tightest pressure and loosens up as it goes. This allows the fluid to be pushed up, okay? Um, next, we have compression bandages. So we have inelastic or elastic compression bandages. So the in inelastic bandages are stiff and provide a high working pressure, okay? When the leg is moving, it gives a high working pressure. However, if the leg is at rest, it does not provide any pressure at all, okay? Um, a good example of this is the Unaboot. It is a single bandage that is impregnated with um, either zinc or calamine lotion. Um, I do have an example of that here. And normally we put um, the compression wrap over top of that. Um, I have seen it in instances where you're just you're just wrapping it um, with like a clean dressing. Now the elastic compression bandages, um, this provides um, pressure to the lower limbs on ambulation and rest. Okay. However, due to the insufficient pressure provided by these bandages, they are not routinely used. Okay. Next, we have multi-layer compression bandage systems, okay? So um, we have the, pro I put the Pro4 Life here. Um, I believe I have another video, I can link it below that explains more into this, but it is a four layer bandage system. They are normally tolerated very well because they have like a soft um, inner layer to protect um, your bone, um, just to give that extra padding. Um, Normally with these bandages, you can, you don't need extensive training for this. So if you're shown once or twice, normally you can put these on. Next, we have our intermittent compression therapy. So these um, devices here. So it inflates and deflates, 
Okay. Um, there are a bunch of different systems that you can use. This is just one that I found online. Um, it, this is used for patients who cannot tolerate sustained pressure. So constant pressure on the legs constantly. Um, but we also don't want to be using these in patients with heart failure or peripheral arterial disease. Um, because it, it gets quite tight. Now, um, we have to be super cautious with any compression therapy in peripheral arterial disease. That's why um, an ankle brachial index is so important to make sure that the legs can withstand compression and to see how strong of compression they can withstand. Um, so as I mentioned before, um, there are some contradictions to compression therapy, okay? So it is super, super essential when we have a leg ulcer, okay? A chronic leg ulcer. My number one go-to is um, an ABPI. So, um, so an ankle brachial pulse index, okay? Super, super important. This gives us values that we can use to see if the leg is compressible, okay? We do not want to be causing more damage than good. We are supposed to be using compression to heal a wound, not cause more damage to it, okay? So we never just want to throw somebody into compression therapy. We want to do the test. Now, an ankle brachial pulse index, it is um, just a non-invasive test um, by using a Doppler and... Um, a blood pressure cuff to see we get certain values. Uh, we use a chart and it allows us to see if the leg is compressible. Okay. If the leg is not compressible, it tells us, okay, we need to be sending them to a vascular surgeon to get further testing done. Okay. Um, but the contraindications, peripheral arterial disease, the blood flow is not flowing to the limbs properly, okay? Our arteries bring the fluid to our limbs, our veins bring it back to the heart. So if our blood flow isn't flowing to our limbs properly, we do not wanna be compressing anymore because we're um, stopping the blood flow ever and more. The nutrients, the oxygen is not getting to those limbs, okay? So that's how we would cause more harm than good. Um, heart failure. If someone has heart failure, um, fluid volume shifts can affect proper function of the heart. So if somebody already has heart failure, we do not want to be um, sh shifting the fluid volumes, right? So we, sh we shouldn't really be using compression therapy. Now, once again, if we send a patient to a vascular surgeon and they do further testing and they say, okay, they can withstand this amount of pressure, okay, then we can use that amount of pressure. So we really need to be looking at the patient as a whole, making those referrals if need be, so they can get the proper care. Um, deep vein thrombosis, so a clot in the deep veins of our legs. If somebody has this, we do not want to compress because it can dislodge the clot, okay? And if we dislodge a clot, it can cause an embolism, okay? Not a good thing. Um, cellulitis. So this is an infection of the skin. When we have edema, okay, so that swelling of the leg that has been sitting there for so long, it tends to cause cellulitis, so an infection of the skin because the edema has just been sitting there so long. It starts causing skin issues, starts causing ulcers. We have to clear this up before we can ever put them in compression, which is super, super difficult. And normally um, we have to put somebody on IV um, antibiotics, normally two weeks to a month depending on how bad it is to get this cleared up. So once again, that's why I always say prevention over cure, because if we're wearing the compressions before these issues start, 
we don't have the issues. But once the issues start, we do have to get back to our preventative measures to ever heal the wounds. Okay, so prevention over cure, because it is way easier to prevent a venous leg ulcer than it is to cure it. So I hope this video did give you a better understanding of how compression does help heal wounds. Um, and that's all I have for this video, guys. I hope to catch you in my next one. Bye for now.